What's up, world? And welcome back to The Real News Network and another edition of I Mix What I Like. I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore, and we're continuing our conversation with activist, author, scholar, organizer, Rosa Clemente, about her life and work. Please go back and check out the previous segments to catch up on anything you missed. But welcome back, Rosa. Thank you. So in this last segment, I wanted to talk with you about your current tour, If I Were President, which is, which is I think, dope in its concept and very important. Uh, and and uh, have, us, have, have you tell us what is encompassed in, in, in what you're, you're doing on this tour um, and, uh, and, and also how it works and relates to the, the burgeoning and developing Black Lives Matter uh, struggle that is, is kind of sweeping the nation right now. Um, but let's start with your tour. What if, if I were president, what, is, what do you mean by that? Well, you well I mean, that? I put the tour together when Bernie Sanders jumped into the race, honestly. Because I was like, here we go again. Um, and I can't believe my community is most likely about to be duped again or sheepdogged, as uh, Bruce Dixon has talked about, you know, to the Democrats again. And I have been struggling whether I ever do I run again? Do I reach out to people who are running on the Green Party and say, ah, let's, should I run for president? Some people have said, oh, be my VP. And I said, no, I'm good. Like, if I run, I'm going hard. And you know, then the reality of the situation, right? Like, I, I don't think in any way uh, the Green Party or any third party is prepared to even get the 5% that is necessary in a national election to make that. And I had to kind of have an inventory and analysis of, okay, so what do we do? What do I do? Because I want to be some kind of voice in this electoral right. political season. So I came up with, if I was president, um, tour kind of off the, you know, Wyclef song. Yeah, election time's coming. Who you gonna vote for? Yeah, if I was president, uh -huh. I'd get elected on Friday, yeah. assassinated on Saturday, buried on Sunday, yeah. they go back to work on Monday. If I was president, if I was president, if I was president, yeah. Instead of spending billions on the war, I can use that money so I can feed the poor, because I know some so poor. And said, you know what, I'm going to spend, um, I spent the last year within Black Lives Matter and Ferguson, and these young people have um, inspired me in so many ways, and I have a voice out there on college campuses, and I want to be where I believe a lot of young folks are disenchanted, feeling marginalized by electoral politics, but also feeling super energized by the growing Black Lives Matter movement. And, um, you know, if people look at the tour, that's why I have the hashtag Black and Brown Solidarity and say her name and Puerto Rico Libre because of the situation that's going on in Puerto Rico, my, my homeland, my island right now, because of colonialism and imperialism. And I said, this is, will be the perfect opportunity to really bring that black and brown, right? But to also move towards a more radical way of even having the discourse and conversation. And lastly, hopefully to encourage the masses of my people to create our own independent political party at this point. I think we've been trying, um, we've been working in, in, in with some other parties and it's not working for us because every time we end up begging people to care about our humanity, which is so antithetical to what Black Lives Matter to me is about. Black Lives Matter is a demand, but it's not a begging thing. And I started getting a little concerned with what I think could be the potential co-optation of Black Lives Matter. And I said, as someone who's part of a chapter and also part of the collective struggle, I'm going to have to move it more to the left and more to a radical point. And that's what I'm, I'm hoping to do. And I, I think the response has been overwhelming. It's been amazing. And everywhere I go and speak, young people want something radically transformatively different based on racial justice. And the more and more particularly white young people I see stepping up to the plate in the role that they should be playing, I said there's a need for something 
else. And at least we have to move the discourse because now the discourse has gone from where we were going right. back to the middle. I mean, how have you been dealing with that in terms of, because I know as, as I know a, a lot of young people are just fed up with the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at the same time, there is this energy around Bernie Sanders. Right. There, and then there's also not just the energy in, in, in this sort of uh, fantastic sense that we also saw with Obama, but this energy around, well, this is the most legitimately practical solution electorally that we have. But not for black and Latino students. So why not? Or, or why, well, what are not, they saying? You know, when I yeah. go to college campuses, mm -hmm. of course the white students are all talking about Bernie Sanders. Not one black or Latino student in one of these, and I've been already at nine campuses so mm -hmm. far, have even said Bernie Sanders, mm. right? He's not appealing to our people. Mm. Now, he might be appealing to some, but the appeal to our people, and I see young people, uh, specifically African-American and Latino young people saying, we don't want to be part of this process at all. We're not registering to vote. We don't want to have anything to do with this election. So what are they saying in terms of, of the, the, the apparent, uh, well, the, the meetings that have been taken with, with reps um, real or claimed of Black Lives Matter with Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders? Like, what are they saying when they see black, uh, at least nominally, um, uh, black leadership representing them in these conversations? Are they not, they're not moved by that either? No, I don't think they are. I don't think mm. the most, I mean, obviously I can't speak for everybody. I can say this, that that meeting with Hillary Clinton was not Black Lives Matter people. Um, I think the thing with Black Lives Matter, it's, um, it's bigger than just write uh, an organized chapter or uh, it's bigger than a hashtag. So many people have taken that on as a principle and a politic doesn't mean they do the right thing around that. Doesn't mean that Black Lives Matter obviously has not engaged in the electoral political debate. When you shut down Bernie Sanders, you're in essence engaging. Um, I was on Facebook last week and um, saw a thread and I read a a lot of the comments, and it was um, responding to Black Lives Matter calling for a presidential form and the response from the DNC. And when you read the thread, almost everybody on that thread said, we shouldn't even be doing this. This is not why I'm in BLM. The, or this shouldn't be the crux of the work of BLM. And that's my fear. It's not my fear that you don't engage power and try to glean something for it. It's what we saw in 2008 and 2012. The best and best of the brightest of organizers and activists then go co-opted and spend the next year around electoral politics where the majority of our people are not even engaged in that way and are waiting for infrastructure and, and chapters to get more solid to do the grassroots work. And um, I think that's a big mistake. We'll see what happens, you know. I, I, I would hope that people understand what these last eight years have meant and why Black Lives Matter came out when we have a black president, right? There's a reason. So I think these are conversations, though, that BLM, for the, the masses in BLM, are engaging, are willing to have, are questioning. But if we're going to be in a democratic society and we're going to engage in electoral politics and we've already created BLM, then why can't we create our own independent political party? I think it's completely possible. Rosa, thank you for joining us here thank to you. Mix What I Like. Thanks for having me. News. And thank you for joining us here at The Real News Network and for this extended edition of I Mix What I Like. For all involved, I'm Jared Ball here in Baltimore saying again, as always, as Fred Hampton used to say to you, we say peace if you're willing to fight for it. So peace, everybody, and we'll catch you in the whirlwind.